hello and uh, welcome back we're going to continue with the temporary structure uh, this time uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to design these two beam and a planking wooden planking on top of it for a moving load moving construction load uh, it's similar to what we have on a board which we use for a crane loading this time we're going to use for a for 988 cat loader and the loading diagram showing like i have on a board right there so we have the uh, uh, front axle is 70 kip, uh, 140 kip, and the back axle is about uh, 30 kips. And this uh, loader will be moving along this uh, 30 feet uh, platform we have. Be going longitudinal and also s taking a turn and probably making a, a load and dumping and going transverse over the uh, uh, platform. So let's see if you can size this. First thing we're going to do, we've got to find out the maximum moment due to a moving load both using transverse and longitudinal tool and we're going to do a hand calculation and then we're going to compare our hand calculation to a computer calculation see how close we are and then we design it that way all right let's get to work uh, first we're going to go ahead we're going to do longitudinal so if the tire of the loader so if you got a tire of the loader right here and that's a 70 kips because the axle is 140 so one tire is about 70 kips and then the second back tire if it's loaded right here, and that will be 15 kips, again, we're going to take the axle and take half of the tire. Uh, I think the, the uh, space in between them is uh, 12 and a half feet. So that's 12.5 feet right here. And 12.5 min minus 30 feet, that should give me 17.5. Uh, 17.5 feet here. First, I want to know what is my maximum shear if m the uh, loader is moving along the beam we obviously know the maximum shear is where the reaction is the most and when the reaction is the most is where the heaviest tire it's on top of the reaction itself so we don't have to go far so let's calculate and find out what it's going to be all right i'm going to take a moment by point b summation moment about point b is equal to zero counterclockwise is positive I have RA times 30, so that's going to be near minus RA times 30 because it's a clockwise. And then I have uh, plus 70 times 30 plus uh, 15 times 17 and a half. That's a 17 and a half. And calculating that, my reaction comes out at A. 78.75 and this is the max which control for this situation because if i go ahead and do summation f of y my rb it's going to be basically 85 minus 78 that's not going to be max so that's the max and we're going to use that for a max i'm going to come over here and make a um, chart for myself in longitudinal i'm going to have a v max it's going to be uh, uh, 7875 kip. Just to complete this, we can do summation f of y is equal to 0. Going up is positive, and I'm going to have 70 plus. I'm going to have 78 plus 75 minus 70 minus 50 plus rb is equal to 0. And rb comes out to... 6.25 kip again just to prove a point that is the max so now uh, let's look at the transverse transverse if you can spell it and it's the same beam um, this time the load is going to dump with both wheel coming at it so if you have a, a 70 kip from the load another 70 be right here because both front wheel is like this so now you got both front wheel and let me put a reaction back in here ra and rb so the load is dumping here dumping here dumping here obviously the maximum shear happen when that one of the heaviest load of the tire it's on top of the reaction itself um, this distance was 8.5 and this distance is going to be uh, 21.5 feet. And we do the same thing over here. 
we're going to calculate the uh, summation moment of our point B is equal to zero, counterclockwise is positive, and I'm going to have uh, R minus RA times 30 plus 70 times 30 plus 70 times 21.5 equals zero, and my RA comes out to 120.15 kip. And if I do summation FOI equals zero, and basically my RB comes out to, uh, you can do that, pretty simple, 20 kip to round it up. So this is the max. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to say for uh, transverse, our share of max came out to be 120. Let's keep it at 120 kip. And this controls because it's bigger than that one. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the maximum moment. And to find the maximum moment, we're going to go ahead and the load, uh, the loader is going to be moving in longitudinal going back and forth. It's going to be just like we did in Bridges End. So you have this load is moving back and forth, so like an influence line, where is going to give me the maximum moment? One way to do this is we find the resulting force of this two load. This is a front tire, back tire. And the resulting load of both of them, which is going to be 85, we take the resulting load and we take the heaviest load and we split the distance between them uh, around the center line and we're going to say that's where the uh, maximum moment happened underneath this wheel. So now we've got to find this distance or this distance. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to say the resulting force R is equal 70 plus 15, which is equal 85 kip. That's good. We don't know any of these distance. All we know is this is a 15 feet from here. That's 15 feet there. We're going to say the maximum will happen right there. I'm going to bring this down. Uh, it's going to be like that. Go to the end. That's crooked. So I'm going to come in right underneath the 70 load. Go all the way to point B. I'm going to cut it right there. This is what we're looking for maximum moment here. Let's call this point C. MC hammer. And we have the 70 kip right here. And then we have the 15 right here. That worked out fine, huh? That 15 works for both of them. And um, the resulting load <coughs> it's going to be down here at 85. Now, this distance, I don't know it. Let's call it x. Okay, for this distance, you can call it x1 if you want. It doesn't matter. I also have a, um, the uh, reaction force Rb right here. All right, so we got all forces. Remember, this data line mean it's not there, but it's 85. These are our railroad or can replace with this one. So in reality, I should show it like this. I should take this out and then make another one over here. Saying like this. And this is RB. And this is your 85. And basically, take this out. This is equal to that. So I'm going to take a moment about point C, and if I take a moment about point C due to the actual load, that should come out equal 
taking a moment about poor and C due to uh, resultant load. And RB is usually going to cancel each other out, so I don't have to worry about that. Moment about poor and C. Uh, summation moment about poor and C is equal to zero. I'm going to first go ahead and use the external load that I have. So I'm going to have RB time this distance. Uh, uh, let's call this distance, we don't know, um, x2. And it's going to be uh, RB time x2, and that is a uh, positive. The next one I have is a 15, and 15 is going to be time. We know the distance between these two load in longitudinal. We know that distance right there is 12.5. That is a 12.5 between the two load. So distance from here, if I bring that down right there, that distance from the tire, from front tire to the back tire, we know that that is a 12 and a half. So I'm going to have plus 15 or minus 15 time. It's going to be minus 15 time 12.5. Okay, that's it. This load, this load, and that doesn't count as, uh, on top of it. All right, whatever that comes out to, that should come out to whatever. So now we're going to take the same thing, summation about point C is equal to zero, go on counterclockwise positive. This time we're going to use the resulting load. It should they both two should be equal. So if I have no, not, not these external load, it's going to be RB again, uh, time X2 and plus 85 time this distance, which I don't know, we call it X, is equal to zero. This is equal to that. These two cancel each other out, so I'm going to have... Uh, F and uh, that should be minus right here. So I'm going to have uh, 85 x is equal 15 times 12.5, and therefore my x has come out to 2.2 feet. That means the distance right here to here is 2.2 feet. So this distance right here is going to be half of that, 1.1. And this one's going to be 1.1. 1 .1. And we're going to say, OK, the maximum moment is about 1.1. Um, the max, the heaviest tire is going to be about 1.1 away, 1.1 feet away from the center line. I can't talk today. All right, so let's find the maximum moment. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to draw this this way. I'm going to have, like, it's going to go like that. And I'm going to have, like, here. And I'm going to have RA. And then I'm going to have the 70 kip, the heaviest load right here. That's where we're going to make that cut. That's the same thing right there. I just went too far. And uh, the distance here, it's going to be basically, uh, oh, it's a 15 minus 1.1. 1 .1. 15 minus 1.1, which is equal 13.9. So that's the distance. And, uh, but we have to find out what RA is, and I want to find out the moment. This moment is the same as that moment, MC with point C. Now, to find out RA, it's going to get a little bit complicated here because we're going to go back in here. Now we have all the dimension. We know this is 1.1. We know from here to here is a 13.9. And if this is from between here and here is 12.5, then the distance between here and the center is 12.5 minus 1.1. And then from here to 15, you can find that distance easily. That distance will come out to 3.6. You can do some calculation yourself, check, double check my number. So I'm going to go ahead and use that, not counting the resultant force. That's not there. And we're going to say summation moment about point B is equal to 0. Counterclockwise is positive. I have minus RA times 30. Then the next load is a plus 70. And that's going to be time 1.1 plus 15 makes it 16.1. And the next load is going to be 15 plus 15. And we said that's a 3.6 is equal to 0. A comes out to 39.37 kip. So now I'm going to come in here, find out my maximum moment right there. Uh, maximum moment, it's going to be. Uh, Right here, it's going to be RA, which came out 39.37. Max moment for longitudinal, it's going to be longitudinal. It's going to be uh, 
39.37, which is right here, time 13.9. Time 13.9, there's nothing in the way until we get here. That can't take moment by itself, so that's all it is. And that's going to come out to 547.2 kip foot. <coughs> I'm going to come back in here for longitude, and I'm going to put maximum moment. It is uh, 547.2. Foot. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and use the computer, see what we're going to get for this. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and use uh, uh, robot structural analysis to find out the maximum moment uh, for that moving load. Uh, just go ahead and select the uh, um, 2D framing. Right here, uh, if you're familiar with this, uh, this program, then you're fine. If not, I have multiple videos for beginner. So come up to the right side right here where it says uh, member. Click on a member. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and just click. Uh, it's going to be beam. And then I'm going to select uh, W60 by 40. You can go ahead and select these there. It doesn't mean anything. I'll, I'll, I just want to find the maximum moment. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out the location of it. It was 30 feet long, so I'm going to go from 0, 0 here, or you can tap it in over here. So 0, 0 right here, and go to 30 feet. It's right there. Click on it, and close this out. So there's our beam right here. Let me make it bigger so we can see it better. And now I'm going to put a, a support reaction underneath it. On the right side right here, you have this icon which says support. Click on that. I've already set this up, and I have a pin support right here. And I'm going to put roller support on the other end. Close this out. <coughs> Next, I'm going to go ahead and identify my loads, load types. And you're going to add the dead load one for the uh, dead load of the beam itself, and close this out. And then I'm going to come up here on the right hand top, it says loads. Click on that. Come all the way down, it says special load. Click on that. And come in, go to moving load. I have already done this a couple of times before. So let me just take these out and redo them over then. Yes, let's delete these. Cat 988. And delete the loader here. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click new. The new will be right here, this icon right there. This new window always opens up. This all ha has all the Ashto type vehicle, but we're gonna. this is going to be a loader. So CAD 98 loader. I'm going to go ahead and just click new here, and we're going to call it uh, CAD 988 loader. And click OK. Actually, let's put down longitudinal L O. Okay, and I'm gonna have to define the type of the load I have right here. Where it says load type, click right there, and click concentrated load. The first tire was uh, 70 kips, and a distance zero and a spacing were I believe 8.5 between the wheels. So I'm going to go to the second tire and the concentrated load. And that was uh, 15 kips. And the distance was 12.5 uh, feet away. And this, the spacing between wheels is still the same, hasn't changed, 8.5 feet. And I'm going to click Add and uh, Close. And there it is right here. So once I'm up here, come back down here. You want to click on uh, new, new, or I'm just going to name it, rename it again. Uh, low, loader, load. Then click define. We want to tell the computer where this moving load is going. 
So I'm going to come in here, and this new window that we just opened up, click Geometry, and go and click on the green area. Let me put this out of the way. Once you click on this area, you're going to tell them where it's going to go. I'm going to start from one end, and basically go all the way to that, the other end. Click that, and hit Apply. Close that out. Come back on this other window, and click Apply, and close that out. And if you go up here, you should be able to see the load. There it is, loader load. Now, anywhere on the screen, click, right click your mouse, and go down to display. When this new window is open up on the left side, go find uh, loads, and then make sure the moving load is checked. And then click apply. It's going to ask you a question, say yes, and we need to click apply OK. So now we have done that. All right, so next I'm going to go ahead and run the calculation right here, calculation. Click on that. And I'm going to look at my result. Go to result, diagram for members, and one, uh, my moment, normalize. It says maximum moment is 544.07. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, put a parameter label so we can see it. There's my moment at 544, and I don't know what we had. So we're going to use uh, the uh, hand calculation. Now, if you're using a computer, make sure your number is within 1 or 2 percent. And which one you're going to use, use the max, whatever is more. But in the court of law, your hand calculation will stand. And, uh, and they should be really close. And we are very, very close. We are less than 1% here. One way you could, this is a move and load. Let's, let's uh, do, um, let me close this out right here. Just put it out. Uh, if you go to a move and load right here, uh, this question mark says component, select component. And uh, we can show that that is a move and load. If I move this, that's a load. It's moving anywhere. If I go back, that's where the maximum moment is. That's the maximum moment is. And that's where your maximum moment is. There it is. Or we can go ahead and do an animation of it. And uh, start. And it does the animation to tell you where the maximum moment happens. You can run this slowly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing as in the previous step. We know uh, uh, the maximum moment happened underneath the heaviest load. In this case, put them over here. And we're going to split the difference between the uh, 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 resultant force and the uh, heaviest load over the center line. And we know that the wheel spacing is basically is eight and a half feet. So the distance between here and here is eight and a half, eight and a half feet. So we're going to take a moment by pouring C due to the uh, tire load itself. And then that should be equal taken a moment due to a resulting load about point C. And uh, I'm just going to ignore RB, just watch the last step. So I'm going to say, OK, uh, taking a moment bar here, it's going to be 70 times 8.5. And that should be the same as uh, uh, 140 times x, 140 times x, which in it, in we can say uh, x is equal. 4.25, basically, seventy times four hundred from that divided by one forty, so that become two point one, two point one two, so we have two point one two here, and this distance also is the same thing, two point one two. And now we have said that we know the maximum moment is going to be under that wheel. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to say, OK, fine. Let's go ahead and find the maximum moment. This is our RA. Now we're going to calculate this RA. And we have the 70 kip right here. And then we have the moment. And we know this distance is going to be basically 15 minus 2. OK, so 15 minus 2.12. And let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and uh, 
we know x, so we're going to find out what ra is. We're going to go ahead um, take a moment about point B to calculate reaction at A. And reaction at A is going to be RA times 30. That's going to be negative. I have nothing until I get to 70. Plus 70 times 15 plus 2.12. 15 plus 2.12 and plus this 70 and that's going to be this distance going to be it's going to be uh, 15 up to here and let's if you come up here so this from here to here is 15 15 plus uh 15 plus 2.12 then minus uh minus uh, the distance between them, which was eight and a half. Uh, I'm going to continue here, minus 8.5, and that equal zero, so Ra comes out to 60.1 kip. So I have 60.1 kip here, and my maximum moment come out to 60.1 multiplied by 15 minus 2.12773.15 kip foot. So now I'm going to come in here and say, okay, MMAX is equal to uh, 773.15. 773.15 kip foot. And again, this one, control. Now, when you design something for a beam, you need the uh, maximum moment. And for this, because it's short, you need to find out what is your uh, uh, shear forces, which was came out to be this. So this are, it will, it will control when a, when a uh, loader is transverse loading and unloading. And let's go ahead and design these, which that take two seconds anyway. Let me erase over here. Now, our maximum moment came out to 773.15. And if we do a turpentry area and we split this in half for per beam, so it's going to be half of that. I'm just going to use for half of that. I'm going to say, okay, 773 uh, divided by 2 is equal to uh, 387 kip foot. And if I take that and go to AC table 3.2, I can easily use... Um, W twenty four by sixty eight, and this is allowable stress design. So, which this moment, uh, the moment for this one is going to be uh, four forty two, which is bigger than three eighty seven. We okay. Now you got to remember when you selecting the size of a beam, this is a temporary structure. Whatever you have available in a contractor yard. And then you can go ahead and find out what is the uh, capacity of that beam is. And if it's bigger than your moment, then you're good. Go ahead and use that. In this case, we just picked this one arbitrarily. So now we have that. And we're going to go ahead and worry about the plank size, what size of plank I'm going to use. OK, so now to design the uh, timber planking over these uh, uh, W shape, uh, we can't really use this uh, maximum uh, moment and shear that was just for the 30 feet long beam because the timber is going to span in only 3 feet. And the width of the tire of the loader, it's about 31 to 36 inches. Those are massive tires. And so it's going to be basically 70 kips on one tire. We can uh, say uh, the loading is going to be on it. 70 kips, so it comes out about uh, 70 divided by 3, comes out about 23.3 kips per foot. And the maximum shear all of is going to be uh, WL divided by 2, which comes out to half of the tire, 35 kips.
So knowing that, actually this year we're going to go to NDS table 4A and we're going to say the plank we're going to use, the timber we're going to use is going to be Douglas fir, and from the table we can find out that, uh, um, uh, find the capacity of that timber, that Douglas fir. And of course you have to use your adjustment factor, this is going to be outside, and based on if you remember from timber design, we have to, instead of just using this, we're going to multiply by the adjustment factor, and that brings that to 200.7 PSI. That controls. Uh, the uh, perpendicular to the grain is, comes out to 625 PSI, which that's kind of larger. So we go with this one. We can just figure out what size we need. We know it's the timber, the cross-sectional area is going to be three feet, because if you look at it this way, the cross-sectional area is going to be high multiplied by going all the way 30 feet. So this is what we're going to use. This is the weaker axis. So you're going to see three feet. And uh, we're going to say F of V, which came out to, uh, uh, to uh, F of V is equal 1.5 times 35,000. And divide that by the area. And that should be equal or less than uh, 201. Let's say 201. PSI. Uh, we can figure the area out and find out what size we have. Uh, if I just go ahead and set it equal to this, and it's going to be uh, area is going to come out to 1.5 times 35,000 pound divided by uh, 201, and that comes out to comes out to 261 inch square. And uh, if I divide 261 by uh, 36, and that gave me uh, close to 8 inches. So if we use, uh, in a problem, we probably use 3 feet uh, by 12 inch, and that's more than enough. But that's the minimum, and that's what the contractor probably had available. Hope this was useful. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it.